Hey guys, Eric here. Um, I just wanted to make this video to show you the uh, finite state machine designer uh, that I use to create the state machines in the curriculum. And you guys might have a chance to if you go through our level three curriculum. Um, I want to say really quickly that this was made by, created by Evan Wallace in 2010. So Evan, if you're out there watching, thank you. I've been making good use of this. So at this point, hopefully you guys all already know what a state machine is. If not, I think you might want to Google around. I'm not going to go into too much depth about it in this video. If you're coming from our class curriculum, then you should already have a good idea of what it is. Um, I'm just here to kind of teach you how to use this tool. Uh, so first things first. So we've got couple lists of rules here. I've only been using these first four, the add state, add arrow, move something, and delete something. So let's go ahead and try to make a simple state machine using this tool here. All right, so if I double click on the canvas, I get a state. So I'm going to call this one on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a simple uh, light switch. So I have an on state and I have an off state. So I can either have my light be on or have it be off. All right, so now I need to figure out how to go in between each state. So to do that, I need to shift, click, and then drag. So here I've created a little arrow that goes from on to off, so I'll have some option of turning it off from the on state. Um, I want to also create in the same way, so I'm shift, click, drag. So I want a way to go from the off state back to the on state, and I'll be able to name that one as well. Uh, problem here, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Problem uh, here is that they're both lying on top of each other, and I'm going to have a difficult time distinguishing between those two uh, actions. So you can actually click on one, and you can drag it out, and this is like maybe my favorite part of this little editor here. All right, so now I have a little bit better picture here of how to get from off to on and how from get to get from on to off. So I think the obvious one is if it's off, I can flick switch on and flick my uh, light switch and it should turn on, right? And then likewise, I can flick the switch off if it's already on. And that turns it off. Oh, I keep doing that. Yeah. So if you double click a lot, you'll end up making a lot more states inadvertently. It's okay to just delete them. Click on it. It'll turn blue and you can press delete. Not backspace delete. He's, he makes that pretty clear in his little editor here. Yeah. Click the delete key, not the backspace key. I may have made that mistake once or twice already. All right, so in addition to this, um, I think I want to just be explicitly clear that if I'm in the on state and I attempt to flick the switch on, so obviously it's already in the on position, it's not going to do anything, it's just going to stay on. And I'll do the same thing for the off state, just so that I'm like super explicitly clear. This is generally how you see um, state machines. Maybe not for something this simple, but they'll generally have an option of feeding back to its own state. And this is something you'll see through our curriculum, through our class. Uh, so this is the complete state machine of a basic switch, just a light switch. Uh, something you'll notice about this is it kind of follows a circular motion. No matter which state you start off in, you're going to end up just going around and around and around. You might take a few detours if you accidentally try to switch it on while it's already on. But in general, you're just kind of going back and forth and doing this circular. It's kind of like perpetually going in this loop. Uh, in our class, because we're going to be making some sort of text adventure game, there's going to be a start and an end. So your state machines throughout the class are going to kind of have this deliberate deliberate motion that goes like from right to left or up to down or from one corner to the other corner. You're going to see sort of your state machine progress uh, from one side to the other. And uh, that's about all I have to say. Um, oh, 
after you do this, if you want to save it, you can export as a PNG. So that's just probably the most common in image file. You're probably familiar with it. Uh, SVG, which is a vectorized image file. You do not need to worry about this if you do not know what it is. And for those of you who use LaTeX, they've got a LaTeX edited file that you can download as well, which I think is pretty cool. I haven't tried that yet, but I use LaTeX myself. So, so yeah. That's about all I got for you guys. Once again, thank you to Evan Wallace making this back in 2010. We're getting some mileage out of it. And I will see you guys next time.